Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, April 9th, 2015. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, Rand Paul attack ads take a page out of the LBJ playbook. Then, what's John McCain's dirty secret? How does it affect POWs? And Afghan opium production hits a new high. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. So they keep all that stuff on the LD, on the lowdown. Not on the down low, it's lowdown. Well, the first warning shot has been fired across the bow at Rand Paul. This after, well, immediately after he announced that he will be running for U.S. president in 2016. An establishment Republican front group responded to the announcement by launching their anti-Rand Paul advertising campaign. In the first of what's expected to be a series of slanderous TV ads against Rand Paul, the elitist neocon warmongers released this television spot, which depicts Rand Paul as dangerous and claims that he stands with Barack Obama. The Senate is considering tough new sanctions on Iran. President Obama says he'll veto them, and Rand Paul is standing with him. Rand Paul supports Obama's negotiations with Iran, and he doesn't understand the threat. You know, it's ridiculous to think that they're a threat to our national security. Rand Paul is wrong and dangerous. Tell him to stop siding with Obama, because even one Iranian bomb would be a disaster. So there you go, a classic example of fear-mongering, and this ad is being run by the Foundation for a Secure and Prosperous America. These guys are big supporters of Senator John McCain, by the way. And so far, it looks like it will mostly run on Fox News channels. No big surprise there. And it really reminds me of the attack ads that LBJ used against Barry Goldwater back in the 1964 presidential race, the Lyndon Baines Johnson campaign, they used scare tactics to trick or scare the American people into voting for Johnson because if they didn't, little girls were going to get nuked. children can live are to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. So voters got scared and LBJ remained president, thus the escalation of the Vietnam War. And I want to play another one. I like these old ads because this was an entire ad campaign, a psyop, if you will, targeting the American people, scaring them into believing that a vote for Lyndon Johnson meant a safer America. Do you know what people used to do? They used to explode atomic bombs in the air. Now, children should have lots of vitamin A and calcium but they shouldn't have any strontium-90 or cesium-137. These things come from atomic bombs, and they're radioactive. They can make you die. Do you know what people finally did? They got together and signed a nuclear test ban treaty, and then the radioactive poison started to go away. But now, there's a man who wants to be president of the United States, and he doesn't like this treaty. He fought against it. He even voted against it. He wants to go on testing more bombs. His name is Barry Goldwater. And if he's elected, they might start testing all over again. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. 
So the more things change, the more they stay the same. And Rand Paul, he's being attacked on all fronts right now, both from the left and the right. And that says a lot. I mean, it tells me he might be onto something. And I'll be the first to admit that I have some serious reservations about Rand Paul. For example, you know, he voted against GMO labeling. What the heck was that all about? But there's no doubt that he is the number one candidate right now, and they are treating him like a threat. And that's why he has to be shut down. I mean, he poses a threat, so he has to be dealt with. They can't get someone like Rand Paul in there who has libertarian views. No, they need someone like Jeb Bush. Or even worse, God forbid, someone like Hillary Clinton. Well, Rand Paul has taken the lead in Iowa as the press, both left and right establishment, goes into overdrive attacks. A lot of top Democrats and pundits are saying Hillary Clinton's campaign is in free fall. I said weeks ago that it's basically uh, collapsed. I don't see that she can be put back together again. And Rand Paul, as we pointed out two years ago in major polls, the senator is one of the only people out there that can bring the country together and defeat a Hillary Clinton or someone else on the controlled left because of his previous anti-war stance. And that's why you got the neocons and rhinos coming out against Senator Rand Paul because they've got his phones tapped, the government does. They know he's a good guy. They know he's been a listener of this show for years and been on the broadcast 20 years ago before anybody knew who Rand Paul was. And they just can't stand him. I mean, they know he's a patriot, and they know his dad's a patriot. And by the way, Rand Paul and Ron Paul are not radicals. In fact, they probably wouldn't even be seen as hardcore enough in 1776, just like I probably wouldn't be. It's that compared to the radical, big government, globalist corporate takeover and the socialist underpinning to domesticate the public, compared to how radical the establishment is, we are radicals. I mean, I remember five years ago, we published an article about the Journal of Bioethics uh, putting out a paper calling for killing kids up to age three, and then other bioethics journals calling for killing old people. Even if they're not sick, just get rid of them. That's uh, George Bernard Shaw socialist talk. You know, if the state doesn't have a place for you, you die. It's the opposite of a loving, compassionate take care of the sick and elderly and the young and the infirm and the mentally ill. It's the opposite. It's a eugenics-based system. And so they've had a whisper campaign by the libertarian group saying he's not hardcore enough. They've got the left attacking him. They've got the right-wing establishment attacking him because Rand Paul is the real deal. That's all I need to know. I mean, the establishment is attacking him because he's got a real shot at winning. And that doesn't mean that Rand Paul would save the world. It's just a bellwether of how libertarian constitutional Americana ideas are coming back into fashion, and it's about legalizing freedom. And it's not about the left owning certain issues and the controlled right owning certain others. It's about people saying we want basic freedom, we want small government, we want local control, we want transparency, we don't want foreign bailouts and foreign aid and corporate bailouts and corporate aid. It needs to be curtailed. Plus, we're going off the edge of a cliff, going bankrupt. Now, one person who's been dead set against Rand Paul from the very beginning is Senator John McCain. And by the way, he just announced that he will be seeking yet another term. And that's good news for the military industrial complex because McCain is known for his cozy relationship with oh, the likes of Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing. And he also has a very cozy relationship with radical Islamic terrorists. That alone should guarantee his position in the Senate. And it was McCain who was instrumental in arming and funding ISIS terrorists in Libya. And I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. 
Uh, Senator but Paul, that's not you're, true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's you want not me to read true. From the, uh, Whether I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Abdel McKean Belhach, seen here with Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham. Well, he's the leader of radical Islamic fighting groups affiliated with Al Qaeda, better known around here as Al Qaeda. And these guys actually killed U.S. troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. And we know that ISIS keeps receiving these accidental airdrops of weapons from U.S. planes. Uh, yeah, I wonder how that goes down. And I've talked with Joe Biggs about that. He says there's no way that it's an accident, that these guys pride themselves in pinpoint accuracy. So the fact that these weapons end up in the hands of ISIS is, it, come on, guys, it's, it's deliberate. They are, the United States is deliberately dropping these weapons into the hands of terrorists. Thank you, John McCain. We know you've been supporting these terrorists for a very long time. And I'll tell you something else about Senator John McCain that most of you don't know about. This is his dirty little secret that you won't catch on the mainstream corporate news media. And that's the fact that he is despised and hated by most Vietnam veterans. I know this might come to a shock to some of you because we've all heard from our television sets how John McCain was a courageous prisoner of war during Vietnam and that he was loved by the brave men and women that he served with. And you know, that's it's not exactly true. You know, following the Vietnam War, there was a huge search for American POWs and it was Senator John McCain who opposed the Senate Select Committee on POW MIA affairs. That's right. He didn't want anybody looking into his past and what really went down during his capture. North Korea did not return a large number of American servicemen at the end of the war, and that some of the men left behind were sent to communist China and to the Soviet Union. Internal documents and statements made at the time also show that our government believed that men were still alive in captivity, and until only a few months ago has kept that reality from the American people. It has covered up what it knew through a pattern of denial, misleading statements, in some cases lies, and by doing so with regard to the Korean conflict, it broke its commitment with the people who put on the uniform to fight for the freedoms and protection that we and our allies enjoy today. Uh, I'll tell you what's not said on the television and will not be said on the television is how much Vietnam veterans and the POWs hate John McCain. A lot of POWs that were living in the camp said he was a, it was a card reader of the enemy. And he didn't want nobody looking into his background in the camp, what went on in that camp. That stuff is still classified, so nobody could see it. And he just had it classified forever, so nobody would ever look at it. I'm an old Vietnam veteran, and uh, all the POWs that I've talked to over the years say that John McCain is a lying skunk. You know, that he, he never was tortured. They were there in the camp with him, and when he came in with his two broken arms because he failed to pull his arms in when he bailed out of his plane and had a leg injury, immediately starts spilling his guts about everything because he didn't want to get tortured. And he made 32 different videos for the communists speaking out against America and how evil they were for what they were doing in Vietnam. Probably did more harm to the idea of trying to get the truth out than any other single person through the efforts he did to block the release of classified intelligence dealing with the POWMIA problem. John McCain uh, uh, and John Kerry both were um, not pursuing this at the, with the same uh, approach that I was. And on the Senate side, we had, we had one person standing in the way of getting in positions that would have been very tough on government bureaucrats who didn't tell the truth. And that one person, Senator John McCain. He insisted that no committee be set up unless he was chairman. So obviously, his intent was to kill everything. He admits that he gave them all of the codes, all of the data, and uh, I'm not even so much blaming him for that, because under torture, people do that, but it turns out he wasn't tortured, and then right. he started singing like a canary in seconds. Yeah, they call him, uh, the Vietnamese communists call him the Songbird. Matter of fact, that's his code name up there, is Songbird. 
McCain because he just came into the camp singing and telling them everything they wanted to know. So this committee was bitterly opposed by John McCain. And by the way, it, it unanimously passed in the House 401 to zero. Only one person in the Senate stood in their way. You guessed it, it was John McCain. And he got his way, it was stopped. And now POW MIA families are left wondering what happened to their brave sons in uniform who were lost forever in the hands of North Korea, Vietnam, the Soviet Union, and China, all because John McCain refused to cooperate and he shut it down. And you wonder how guys like that rise to the top in politics? Well, as they say, scum rises to the top. And we're going to take a quick break right now. InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. Stick around. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 The Associated Press tried to corner Senator Rand Paul on abortion Wednesday by asking him to state definitively which exceptions to a ban he'd support. When Paul danced around the question, the AP dutifully sent the story out, hoping that the rest of the media would continue asking him about his stance. And that's exactly what happened at a presser yesterday afternoon. But this time, Paul was ready for them. I just want to know where you do stand on exemptions. Should there be any exemptions for abortion or not? What's the DNC say? Why don't we ask the DNC, is it okay to kill a seven pound baby in the uterus? You go back and you ask Debbie Wasserman Schultz if she's okay with killing a seven pound baby that is just not yet born yet. Ask her when life begins and you ask Debbie when she's willing to protect life. When you get an answer from Debbie, come back. The DNC head responded rather quickly. In an emailed statement, Wasserman Schultz said, here's an answer. I support letting women and their doctors make this decision without government getting involved. Period. End of story. Social media was on fire. People quickly responded asking if the Democratic Party was united in this extreme stance. After all, if you say you want abortion handled without government getting involved, it means you want zero government restrictions, right? I mean, well, except for those government subsidies. Now, Senator Paul then crushed it with this reply. Well, it sounds like her answer is yes, that she's okay with killing a seven pound baby. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you approach the abortion debate with a partisan media. This is Leanne McAdoo reporting, and you can read more about this story and others at Infowars.com. On Holy Saturday, April 4th, 2015, while the good people of the city of North Charleston, South Carolina, reflected on the meaning of the day before Easter, 50-year-old Walter Scott, a veteran of the Coast Guard and father of four, was running for his life due to a broken taillight and child support back pay. This was a cop who felt like he could get away with just shooting someone that many times in the back. He just casually shot a man in the back that many times. And it speaks to the value of human life, which is a bigger issue than trying to just make this a small issue of race. This is a bigger issue of, of human life and the value of it. And when people start respecting that more, it won't matter what color you are. Once again, if we would have just took the initial newspaper reports, it would have been, why did that guy grab the taser? He shouldn't have tried to hurt the cop. But that wasn't what happened. And the truth came out. American citizens, numbed by the constant murder-by-cop legitimization through the mouths of talking heads and police officers emboldened by growing legal negligence, were expecting more of the same. Portland police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man has been fired today. Three others are now suspended. Says Lisa Markle has been suspended without pay. State police investigated David Kasich's death for seven weeks. No charges Mar will not be filed against three Hendersonville police officers involved in the shooting of a burglary suspect back in March. And the officer is suspended without pay. 33-year-old officer Michael T. Slager immediately claimed he feared for his life in a 9-11 call because Mr. Scott had taken the stun gun from him in a scuffle. The video clearly tells a completely different story as Officer Slager plants the stun gun next to Scott's face down and limp handcuffed body in full view of another officer who needs to be investigated as well. Before the vampiric White House media machine fueled by billionaire George Soros can drag this out into the arena of public opinion and shake its collectivist despotic finger at racism as the culprit, the facts show that a trigger-happy cop is 25 times more likely to shoot a white citizen than a black citizen. President Obama, with great communistic zeal, has done more to militarize the police than any previous president. The president's task force on 21st century policing rolled out in March of 2015. The multi-million dollar action plan appears to address an effort to build legitimacy and trust with a transparent approach towards policing, using technology and treating citizens with respect. However, looking deeper into it, the 109-page plan is nothing less than a common core for police, a globalist federalization of state and local police force standards. In the document, Task Force member Susan Rahr points out the stark differences between police and military. In 2012, we began asking the question, why are we training police officers like soldiers? Although police officers wear uniforms and carry weapons, the similarity ends there. The missions and rules of engagement are completely different. The soldier's mission is that of a warrior, to conquer. The rules of engagement are decided before the battle. The police officer's mission is that of a guardian, to protect. The rules of engagement evolve as the incident unfolds. Soldiers must follow orders. Police officers must make independent decisions. Soldiers come into communities as an outside occupying force. Guardians are members of the community, protecting from within. But in full doublespeak, the DOJ's unconstitutional $123 million community-oriented policing services or COPS program is testing out federal militarization of police forces in six cities. The COPS website is focused in on homeland security to include protecting critical infrastructures, information intelligence problems, and other homeland security problems. The COPS office supports the Attorney General's priority goal 
of reducing violent crime, especially if it is gun-related. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Additional consideration was also given for the applicants who have experienced an unanticipated catastrophic event. And the cop's office supports the attorney general's commitment to hiring military veterans whenever possible. The law worked because the surveillance state works both ways. And after reviewing the video, unlike the outcome of the blatant death of Eric Garner in Long Island, New York. What we have here is, as you've already noted, uh, an illegal chokehold uh, caught on tape. The, uh, the coroner says that this is a homicide. End of story. There is no way in my mind or anybody else's mind, I believe, that's looking at this for what it is, that we can justify a no indictment from this grand jury. The scales of law and order were honored rather than ignored, and it didn't take a multi-million dollar routing of liberty like the DOJ's COPS program to make it all happen. It's real simple. The system works when it's not being violated. It goes to say how we work as a community. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And if you make a bad decision, don't care if you're behind the shield or just a citizen on the street. Uh, you have to live by that decision. I'm not defending police. In fact, I'm trying to reform the police. And you don't do that by running around saying kill the police like the George Soros funded groups. You're going to reform the police by explaining to them, most of them already know this, the globalist paradigm of giving them the training, the culture that will make them enemies of the people, giving them missions that will make them enemies, the fake drug war, going after folks for petty crimes like long grass in their yard, but letting, you know, big bankers go free and illegal aliens go free. They don't like it either on average. But then the bad cops get protected by the corruption, and then that comes out in the media demonizing the police in general. The point is, is that the world's not perfect. You're going to have shootings. You're going to have crazy pilots crashing planes. You're going to have bad cops. And no amount of reform from the top is going to fix it because the globals don't want to fix anything. That's what I'm getting at here. John Bound for Infowars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the idea of liberty. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1 253 3139. 
InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does Vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but Vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. Well, officially, the U.S. government wants us to believe that American troops were sent into Afghanistan to fight terrorists and to fight the war on drugs. U.S. officials refer to it as their counter-narcotics mission. Private security firms like Blackwater, where they're getting paid billions of dollars to eradicate Afghan narcotics. Yet somehow, the drug production rate in Afghanistan, well, it's reached peak levels. Man, it is at an all-time high. Yet somehow, the drug production rate from Afghanistan has reached peak levels. I mean, right now, there is more heroin coming out of Afghanistan than ever before. It's almost as if the U.S. government is dealing the drugs. Say it isn't so. <laughs> David Knight, um, billions of dollars are being poured into Afghanistan to fight the drug war, yet here we are with the largest drug production coming out of that area since yeah. before 9-11. What's going on out there? Oh, absolutely. At one point, the Taliban was behind the drug production in Afghanistan, but then they banned it, mm -hmm. and it dropped only 10% of the supply. Now, depending on who you look at it, it's 80 to 90% of the world's supply is coming out of Afghanistan since we went there. And every year, it's a bumper crop increase. Now, they've got an increase in Mexico in their production. And of course, in the last uh, seven years, they've had a seven-fold increase of heroin coming across the border. But the question is, is that due to their increase or is that just because the Mexican border is open? And that's gonna be the most obvious place that you would smuggle anything, including nukes. Sure. Now check this out, I wanted to show you this. According to the US Inspector General, the private security firm, Academy, these guys are formerly known as Blackwater, so they've been rebranded, and they have received $309 million from us, from you and me, U.S. taxpayers, to fight the drug war in Afghanistan. And I don't know, what do you think? Do you think they're being double-crossed by Afghan Border <laughs> Patrol? Or I think that? they're doing exactly what they were supposed to do, and that is to make sure that they've got an adequate supply of drugs, okay? They're, the government is running both sides of this. We pointed this out for a very long time. Just last year, they had a 17% increase in Afghanistan's uh, poppy supply, okay? It is 22 and a half times bigger than the production in Mexico, even after the surge in Mexico. And yet the media is trying to present this as a problem that is rushing in because we've got legalized marijuana in several different states. Mm. That is not the problem. It was drug prohibition that created these drug cartels. It just happens to be, yes, they are switching to that. There was an article uh, on Washington Post talking about how they're not making any money anymore. They're actually getting out of the uh, marijuana business. They have uh, farmers in the Sinaloa state, they said, they have, they're no longer even planting the crop. The wholesale price has collapsed from $100 per kilogram to less than 25. One of the farmers there said, it's not worth it anymore. He's been doing this his entire life. He's 50 years old. That's been his profession, a cannabis farmer. He says he can't remember the last time his family and others in the tiny hamlet gave up growing moda. He said, I wish the Americans would stop this legalization. Mm -hmm. That's the way you stop, you, you, you bring it down to where it's affordable, where you can control it, and we have to recognize that it has medical uses. It shouldn't be a Schedule One drug. Yeah, Nixon's the one that made it a Schedule One drug. Yes, yes. Well, and actually, it was the UN who came out with a template 10 years before, just as they've done with Agenda 21. Okay. The UN yeah. created the template with the four schedules and said, put these drugs and these schedules 10 years before Nixon declared the war on drugs. So this whole thing, conservatives need to understand 
This whole thing is a UN agenda. And they also need to understand when they look at the safety issue, it, again, in this Washington Post uh, uh, article, they said, although prescription painkillers remain more widely abused and account for far more fatal overdoses than heroin, okay, because people aren't getting fatal overdoses of marijuana. So Ever. The that's right. Yeah. The prescription painkillers are really the issue here. Things like OxyContin, mm. the thing that addicted Rush Limbaugh. Some people have suggested that perhaps yes. uh, it's what caused him to uh, lose his hearing, but yeah. we don't know. It yeah. still highlights the dangerous effects of the prescription drugs. Well, and Big Pharma, they're the ones that are opposed to the legalization of marijuana more yes. than anyone. Yes. There was just an article that came out last summer in August by the Journal of the AMA, JAMA. They said the 13 U.S. states that have legalized medical marijuana have seen prescription painkiller overdoses drop by 25%. And remember, it's the prescription pain overdoses that have far more, according to the Washington Post, far more lethal overdoses than even heroin. So that's the most dangerous thing. But we need to get back to this whole idea of what prohibition has cost us. There was just the article that came out today talking about how they've been, law enforcement, DEA, has been collecting people's phone records without search warrants for decades. Way, doing be it way before the NSA exactly. started. Exactly. Yeah. All of the evisceration of our rights, all of the destruction of our legal system, has been done in the name of the drug enforcement, okay, in the war on drugs. And now they're moving it up and moving it to another area with the war on terrorism. But it all began with the war on drugs. They're just extending it and continuing it now with these two phony wars. So now I guess the, the solution, the solution according to the White House would be more money to fight the war on drugs. Oh, right? yeah. They're going to want That's more. Right. They're going to want more of U.S. tax dollars to fight this. And it, isn't it funny how... Whenever the U.S. government gets involved, let's say the war on drugs, that means bigger drug cartels, more drugs on the street. Whenever there's a war on terror, there's more terrorists and, uh, you know, for a, a bigger destabilization of the region. Whenever the U.S. government in, uh, gets involved, it seems the opposite. It's an Orwellian effect. Well, and that's exactly what they intended to do. It gives them money for their black operations. And as you pointed out, with Blackwater there, they're getting paid a humongous amount of money, and yet we still see that production is jumping 17% just last year, even though Blackwater is getting paid a fantastic sum to stop that very thing. It's fraudulent on both ends, but it serves their agenda. Blackwater's only been beat out by Northrop. You know, they're getting paid a little more so that they're actually in there fighting the war on drugs in Afghanistan. And check this out. In December, the United Nations reported a 60% growth in Afghan land used for the opium crops, that's since 2011, so 60% yeah. growth. I can only imagine what those figures would be if, if they began that from before 9-11, before the U.S. put troops, uh, boots on the ground in Afghanistan. Absolutely. When I look at this, and I look at the way it's being covered in the mainstream media, they're almost talking about the, the fact that they're switching over to heroin in Mexico as being something that is the fault of legalization here. Mm -hmm. When the real story <laughs> is, is that the way you stop these criminal gangs, and of course they're gonna diversify. We saw that happen with Al Capone. Same thing, I was the gonna guys say, who, who reminds made me a, of prohibition in the 30s. Exactly, and they diversified into other things. They diversified into uh, the drugs, for example, okay? But now they're having to go turn to kidnapping, they're having to turn to heroin or whatever. The way you stop these drugs is to cut off the profit from these cartels. And this is a, the, the number of people that have died in Mexico is off the charts. These drug gangs are brutal. So anything that we can do, like legalization, that will uh, put a, a hitch in their profits is, is something I think we ought to take a serious look at. But there's also the medical side of it too. And just, you know, it's, it's one more uh, indication that yes, there are many, many, as we pointed out, many, many times uh, and ways that people can use marijuana for medical purposes. It should not be a Schedule One drug. And the truth is getting out as far yes. as the medical benefits. Absolutely, yes. truth is getting out. You have children who are having seizures, you know, and they're they're taking medication using uh, was it cannabis oil or, or what yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So and and then that's the way Tommy Chong. You yeah. know, the poster child for marijuana, he and treated his cancer with cannabis oil as well. That's right. I give credit to Rand Paul because the whole gist of this bill that he's put together with some Democrats as a bipartisan bill is to change marijuana from being a Schedule One drug. And if they were to do that, 
uh, that would have profound effects. And he's the only presidential candidate that has the integrity to stand up and call this for what it is. The rest of them will say jokingly, yeah, I did it when I was young. They're all saying, even Jeb Bush is saying, yeah, I did it when I was young. And yet they would send people to jail for extended periods of time, ruining other people's lives for something that they did for recreational use. Do that to ruin people's life for something that they're taking medically. That's the most amazing thing. And that, of course, means more people in the corporate prison complex. Thank you, David Knight. Hey, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, Texas time, that is. Until then, have a great evening. We'll see you back right here tomorrow night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.